Okay, so we're recording on the video. So if people watch your video, okay. they'll get to see the earlier part. Mm -hmm. The intro that I do here doesn't necessarily mean mm -hmm. that this will be the intro that will end up on the podcast, mm. which yes. does fool people sometimes. I've had people say to me, <laughs> hey, I was listening to the podcast and I can't remember you talking about whatever. And I said, no, no, I recorded that afterwards. I redid the beginning. And yeah. Oh, okay. Just thought I was going crazy. But if they watched the video, <laughs> they would have seen the video is the original recording. Yeah. Which is why when I release the videos, it's it's classed as uncut because I don't cut out any of this stuff beforehand. Mm. So if you swear right now, it's in there. It won't be on the podcast, but it could be on the Damn video. it. Yeah, damn it. <laughs> um, which I did one earlier this morning. And yeah. the first two minutes of the video, or the first three minutes of the video is me stuffing up the intro. <laughs> it's me doing it and I went uh, 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 and I started I swore and then we were laughing and then we started laughing and we couldn't every time I went to do it yeah. the guests would start laughing and it was putting me yeah. in. so <laughs> okay so I'm going to do my do my intro okay and <clears throat> get into it for me so here we go Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends podcast. The podcast is on to help you feel, see, and think differently about the podiatry profession. With me today, I have an interesting guest. You may have heard her name. It is Hector Vadgama. Now, I hope I pronounced that right. Did you get that right? <laughs> you did. I you did. did. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, hey, Tyson, why have you got a podiatry student on the Podiatry Legends podcast? Well, if you sit back and listen, you will find out. And Hector has been on the podcast before when I did the World <laughs> podiatry students episode that was episode 106 and 107 and those two episodes went gangbusters so if you haven't listened to them go back and have a listen you get to hear what podiatry students are thinking in a lot of different areas now i got Hector on here because we're going to talk about social media and different aspects of it so Hector how are you doing I'm doing really good how are you <laughs> I'm good and I think I'll keep that introduction I think that worked out well that did uh, you did so good <laughs> Yeah, no, sometimes I stuff it up. So I always stuff mine up. Like I, I always tell my guests, like I'll, I'll record the intro after because I can't, I can't do it. Yeah, I've got a friend who, when he has his guests on, he pretty mm -hmm. much just uh, he presses record and says, okay, let's just, and he just starts asking questions. Yeah, and they, and he's told them beforehand that I don't. He goes, I'll, I'll do the intro, and when you listen to his podcast, the way he does it, it's really good. So he will actually mm -hmm. do the whole edit. And then his introduction is almost like a review of what's about to come up. So you can yeah. actually listen to the show and go, oh, and we talked about um, you know, YouTube and we talked about Facebook. Mm -hmm. And people go, oh, okay, this is something I want to listen to. The mm -hmm. negative of it is sometimes I've listened to the intro and gone, no, nah, it sounds like a really sucky episode. <laughs> so I don't listen. <laughs> but it, uh, different podcasts, different yeah. things. So we've got you on here. The reason I got you on here was because, and I said this before I press record, how dare a second year podiatry student be starting this big social movement of interviewing podiatrists <laughs> from all around the world, some which are, are really important ones. Um, yeah. How did this start? What, what I want to know is what went off in your head to think you could actually get away with this? <laughs> I, that's a very good question. I to be honest, I didn't realize I was starting a social movement. Like it all began with me recording funny videos in my dorm room. <laughs> and um, that, yeah, actually, when I first saw those videos, that's when I was yeah. confused. And I didn't know if you were Canadian or from the United Kingdom because she used to do the yeah. accents. And I sit there going, which one's which? Because she does them both really, really well. Yeah. So, so the Canadian accent was the real accent. Yeah. So the Canadian accent's the real accent. Um, and I, I love playing around with accents and I try not to be offensive and I try to be respectful, but I absolutely love playing around with accents. Um, for the life of me, like I can't do a French accent. I, I really want to. I cannot. I can't do it. There was one time this guy, I was sitting in um I was sitting in a Tim Hortons and this is sorry, I go off on a bit of a tangent here, but yeah, that's right. I was sitting in a Tim uh Tim Hortons and th they have like they serve baguettes there as well, like as a 
for a sandwich and the, in a really loud voice just obnoxiously loud he's like can i have a baguette and i was like oh my god the whole world just shook for a moment um i don't know what point i was trying to make with that story probably no, but you nothing. said you were talking about accents that you like doing yeah. different accents and i think a lot of people my daughter and i we do it all the time we'll be in the car together and my wife my wife goes to join in but we ban her from doing accents because <laughs> It doesn't matter what country she does. They always sound the same. And we both just sit there going, please, please stop punishing us with the accent. If she can overhear me at the moment, if she can, she can come in here and probably impersonate somebody. And you might be able to I'd love, I'd love if she did that. That would be amazing. <laughs> but yeah, we have, a, we have a lot of fun in person yeah, yeah. doing accents. And we do, um, every time both of us do an American accent, we always, for some reason, go Southern. We talk about my brother or my father when we get some water in uh -huh. the fountain. Yeah, it's just, it's terrible. <laughs> Southern's good. The, the Southern, you can't really go wrong with the Southern accent, right? Like, yeah, I think I, it's, I, it's easy Texas. to do. <laughs> yeah. So, so you were doing uh, some funny videos yourself, but what's, but what prompted yeah. you doing the videos in the first place? Why did so, you think you're doing those? Um, so it all started okay so when the pandemic hit I was feeling um really lost and I was like I don't know what to do I've got all this spare time I don't know what to do I've started this course I've started my life over and um yeah I started a blog and then from that blog uh, one of my teachers recommended me to do a prospectus video, which was a, it was like a serious video on like why I chose Northampton and why I chose podiatry. And then from that, I was like, why, like, wouldn't it be funny if I could just say how I really felt about the course, but in like a humorous way yeah. um, and kind of poke fun at it. And I did. And I, and I showed it to my mom. And my mom's like, this is really like, and I did it mainly just to make her laugh. Um, but then she was like, this is really funny. You should post it. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> like, I don't have the, I don't have the guts to do that. Like that's, yeah. uh, this is no, this is too, like, people are going to make fun of me. I'm going to be heavily criticized. I'm going to be heavily judged. Uh, oh yeah. All of the above. All yeah. the, you're guaranteed. <laughs> I'll tell you, anyone, anyone that does a video, does anything and puts it out there, you will be criticized. Yeah. You will be judged. Just yeah. accept it. But you, you realize the people that are judging you are usually idiots. <laughs> that was, They're that's my future I employers, so I can't like. Oh, true. Yeah. Um, so uh, my mom's like, if you don't post it, I will. And I was like, oh, no, no. OK, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then and then I did it. And then after that, it just snowballed. Um, and the interviews, actually, I didn't have any plan to do an interview like I had no plans like I had no structure um but Dave James interviewed me and I don't mean to name drop here but he interviewed me and I was like this is actually pretty cool like that's no, okay I nobody like knows I... who Dave James is so it's all fine <laughs> yeah who <laughs> <He's> <laughs> the Dave dude James. with the hair <laughs> yeah I think he's, been, he's been on here I think he's been on the podcast twice two or three yeah. times if he's only been yeah, on twice we... he probably needs to come on a third time oh my god absolutely um we actually did a video together where he purchased a wig and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Like he's so cool. Um, so then, so when he interviewed me, I was like, Oh, this is, this is pretty awesome. Like I want to do this. And I kind of piggybacked off of his idea and yeah. it um, just snowballed from that. Like, and, and here I am today. Okay. So it all started <laughs> with Dave's because when Dave was on the podcast, the first, he was talking about being the foot and leg magician on the first time he was on. <laughs> And that was episode 007, because I just remember when it came out, 007, yeah. and people were saying to him, of course, you're yeah, Dave James, 007. <laughs> yeah. And then I had him come back on because we were talking about video and, and using video um, in your business, because mm -hmm. I actually got a hold of him and I said, oh, Dave, can you give me a hand with doing some yeah. video stuff? And he just gave me a couple of pointers, which are really good. Mm -hmm. So so it all started with he interviewed you and you thought, well, if Dave yeah. can do it. And you thought, if Dave can do it, how yeah. hard can it be? <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> it's not hard. I was like, That's the thing is it's, it's really yeah. not hard to do. Mm -mm. And um, so my, my first interview was Jackson. And I remember like before I started, I was absolutely just shaking. And I was like, oh my God, what if I like, uh, what if I butcher this? Um, 
what if I mess up my like questions or what if I upset my guests? Like that was my biggest thing. Like I never, I always wanted to make sure my guests are happy. Like if they're happy, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, and for the first interview, I was absolutely terrified. And then after that, I was like, this is. And that's a good sign of a good host too, is yeah. your, your goal is to, one, it, you want the guests to be comfortable. Yeah. You want them to be happy with the end product as well. But you also got to keep in mind the people that are listening or watching, you want them to be entertained. Yeah. And, and you yourself, don't want to make you're your probably the last feel... person in, in the equation. You still got to oh have fun yourself yeah. though. Yeah. And you don't want to make, make your guest feel like misrepresented. So um, that, that was the biggest thing. So because I had all that in mind, like I put so much pressure on myself in the first interview um, and Jackson was amazing. Oh my God. Like he was such a, he was such a flawless guest. Like, um, and he was really easy to talk to. And we've done a few videos since, um, but yeah, no, it was just for the first interview, I put so much pressure. And then after that, it was totally fine, but you need to get that one out the way first. You I need to get the, the nerves out the way. One. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, and I, I think it's surprising too, like I've seen some of the people that you've had on your videos mm. and I'm sure some other podiatry students yeah, around the world have seen some of them and gone, wow, how did you get that person on? And oh, do you mean would, Howard Dannenberg? Well, the secret would be your ass probably. Yeah, I just, I just, <laughs> do you know what? This is so cheeky. Um, So I was absolutely bricking it. We were learning about, uh, we were learning about one of his theories um, and I had him on as a friend on Facebook and I was like, what are the chances he's going to actually respond or even look at this? So I was like, hi, Mr. Dannenberg, would you like to be on my, uh, my you YouTube call him channel? Mr. Dannenberg. I did. <laughs> Mr. Dannenberg. I did. I did. And honestly, like I was, he was like, yeah, sure. Like just, just like that super casual. And I was like, oh my God, I was absolutely bricking it. And then, um, the, when we, when I actually sat down and interviewed him, he was the sweetest, kindest man I've ever met in my life. Like yeah. <laughs> he put together a PowerPoint for the interview, like to make sure like whatever students watching that particular episode, you know, they get the best uh, that they can out of it. Um, and I was like, you like, you know, as a guest, like he went above and beyond. And I thought like, this is, this is so cool. But yeah, yeah well, it just started on, by me asking him. He was on the podcast twice as well. Same thing. Yeah. I just asked him to come on. He said, yes, but I have yeah. asked other people. I've had, I have asked other people to come on the podcast and they've said no. Yeah. And I didn't, and it didn't kill me, which was, yeah. um, which I, I learned. <laughs> then, and that's what you got to do is just, just keep asking people. Yeah. No, I and agree. Earlier on, when you said you started with a blog, was that a written blog or was it a video blog? It was, it started as a written blog. Um, and it, it, it should still be up there. I haven't made any posts for a very long time. I think since last July, I want to say I've not done anything. I should. I think I'll like start working on that again, but because um, I really enjoyed it. Um, but that caught, so that blog caught the attention of my, my lecturer yeah. and he was like, this is really cool. Like, do you want to do a prospectus video um, and kind of explain like why you chose Northampton and why you chose podiatry? Um, so, yeah. Okay. So you started that, then you started doing your uh, parodies and funny videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then Dave James had you on, which then you thought, okay, I'm going to rip off what James, that Dave James is doing. I'm going to do the same thing. And, and yeah. like I said, there's a lot of people that are doing that. And there's some really good information out there too on some of oh, yeah. videos. Um, I think this is like, so this is what I like about healthy competition is it kind of benefits everybody around us. Um, and I, I'm not trying to like steal Dave's spotlight because he's got, you know, years of experience on me. He will easily trump me. Yeah. Uh, so th I'm not competing with him, but I think like that little healthy competition is going to benefit everyone in the end. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's so much competition. It's how can I put it? Say, for example, like I do business coaching. Yeah. So I help other podiatrists have a better podiatry business. Every podiatrist yeah. I've worked with, I know I can put a shitload of money in the bank account. Yeah, no, yeah. no problems whatsoever. Yeah. But I guarantee people listening to this now, there'll be a pile of people listening and go, oh, no, but I wouldn't want to work with Tyson. Because oh, there's going to be strange. other people that they just, they just gel, they're going to gel better with. Yeah. So to me, and what I meant by that is, you could interview Howard Dannenberg. I could interview Howard. Dave James could interview Howard. And they're going to be three different interviews. Different. We, yeah. we, we will actually draw out of that person 
different things that yeah absolutely um yeah and the question you're going to ask might be something that i never even thought about asking that (laughs) i asked the dumbest question (laughs) well like i said there's no dumb questions just dumb people um so (laughs) so it's but the thing is that's the that's the idea i think the more and that's why you you would have seen yeah how dannenberg on so many other he's been on other podcasts he's been on other videos and people will go, well, well, why watch it? Because it's going to be exactly the same. But yeah. it's not. It's what the host actually brings out of the guests. That's why there's so many, how many talk yeah. shows are there around the world who have probably had, say, Sylvester Stallone on? Yeah. But it's the it's the host that brings out certain things in that actor that other people can't do, which yeah. which makes it a unique interview. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Um, and it's all about like personality meshing. Um, yes. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Like you and I, all three of us could interview Howard Dannenberg and they would be vastly different interviews. Um, yeah. And because it depends, it depends how you connect with that person at the end of the day. Yeah. And there's going to be other people too, that you could ask to be on your video who will say yes, but mm-hmm. they'll say no to me because they may have heard my podcast and they go, oh, no, he says the word shit a lot. <laughs> Uh, I've never dropped the f bomb on here, but I've had guests. I've had guests that have, but yeah. I, I, yeah, I try not to. Uh, if I just do, say it, if I do accidentally <laughs> edit it out anyway. Um, but there'll be certain guests that would would have seen, you know, listened to this podcast or maybe seen a video and gone, "No, I don't want to be on that show." Right. But there'll be other people that will say yes to you. But there might be someone who will say no to you, who may yeah. say yes to me. So it, it yeah. works the same way. Yeah. Have you had any rejection? Oh my God. Lots, lots. Um, and it's, it's mainly people that they're not comfortable in front of a camera. Um, and they're not, and, and that's totally fine too. Like I'm not, obviously I'm not judging anybody because, um, uh, it, it takes a, it takes a minute to get used to, um, a little bit. Oh yeah. I, 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 I judge them a lot, but I don't tell them. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um but no he, like it's it, it takes a minute to like adjust to how you look on a camera because mm. how you think you look in your mind is different than how the camera picks up how you look and well, it's really weird i was talking to earlier on today so depending mm-hmm. when this episode comes out in relation to when his episode comes out <clears throat> but i was talking to um uh <clears throat> my throat could all <laughs> Uh, sound check <laughs> <laughs> i was talking to richard blake and right. yeah you know, like the blake inverted orthotic mm-hmm. and it, it was it was really cool but then when we were talking he actually said something to me about oh some year and he says oh you probably weren't born then and i was like <laughs> well uh yeah i was actually so i'm thinking i'm going to take that as a compliment Oh, there you go. Look at you. So, yeah, I <laughs> the said the sunscreen him, oh. is working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's that filter. It's the filter on the, that uh, filter. On the camera. Actually, I'm looking a bit orange. Every time I wear a red shirt, I do. I look a little bit orange. Um, oh. So, and plus, I just I cropped all my hair off again just before coming on here. So I tidied myself up. I was looking scruffy. I was going to say, you do look a bit spiffy. I, yeah, I, like well, I did. I, like I, I, I tidied myself up because what it was, <laughs> I've done a couple of recordings today. Right. And okay. when I do a couple of recordings in a mm-hmm. row, I'm thinking, I don't want people to watch the video and go, ah, oh, he must have done them all on the same day because he's wearing the same shirt and he looked exactly the same. <laughs> so I did a couple of recordings earlier on wearing a green yeah. shirt. Mm-hmm. And so I said, okay, well, I'm going to go in and get the clippers out and crop my hair, hair off and yeah. then go and jump in the pool and go for a swim. And then chuck on a shirt and come back here. So therefore, now yeah. it, comp- it looks like a completely different day. But it's all. Do you, can I ask you time. a question? Do you do you let your wife like trim your hair? No, I do it myself. Oh. Yeah, she did it the first couple of times, um, and, and then I wanted to get it done one day, and she's oh yeah, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I said, you know, I'll do it. Oh myself. God. <laughs> so I did it myself, and I went. I wasn't too bad. And then I then I took yeah. it shorter. And uh, yeah, so eventually I'll I'll draw pictures into it, maybe. (laughs) Um, So back to you. What? Yes. Where where do you see the what you're doing now? Like this, this social footprint that you're creating for yourself. Mm. Where do you actually see it going? Do you think it's going to be something that will help you get a job when you graduate? 
Um, oh, Lord. Because um, a lot of people would know your name now because of... Like, do you think so? Well, not just because of the guests that you've had on, but you've also been on other people's... Like you've been on this you know, this podcast. So there's yeah. be thousands of people going to know who you are for listening to this. <laughs> you may never get employed. Um, <laughs> but you know, you've been on with Dave James and... Even yeah. though you've had Jackson on, you've had Howard on, there's people that watch that stuff. So you, your name mm-hmm. wouldn't be getting around. Okay. Um, so you could become. It's, it's, you know, so, yeah, ju- it's got- so weird when you say that because I feel like. I know. I feel yeah, like I'm so bro. like small in comparison. <laughs> you got the toe bro. You could be the toe broad. Oh, oh I like that. That sounds very catchy. I love it. I'm stealing toe, it. The toe broad. <laughs> toe, toe broad. <laughs> the toe winch. Um, <laughs> hey, toe broad, come fix my foot. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure we just offended <laughs> someone saying the word broad and winch. But anyway, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, just send complaints to uh, to uh, yeah, complaints department at We Don't Care. Um, <laughs> wrong email at wrong.com. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. So, yeah, so do you see this like future-wise? You will just keep doing the videos and you will grow from it. Yeah, maybe um, – Production-wise, change the production of it and, and make it a little bit more, um, I wasn't going to say more professional, but they're not professional. <laughs> wow. 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 How's that? Why don't are you, you cut me? Your, yeah. Are you going to make your videos more professional? <laughs> Why don't you actually hurt my feelings, Tyson? <laughs> well, all they're going to do is watch my videos and they'll find out that you'll just produce so much better than mine. No. Oh, God, no. I, do, I press record and that's it. I don't do anything else. Not yet, anyway. I am yeah. planning to. Yeah. It's, it's really, um, that's a really good question. Cause anytime anyone's ever asked me that, I'm like, should I have like long-term plans with this? Cause at, at this point I'm just kind of going with it. Um, uh, and I, well, maybe I do kind of have a, a, a goal for this and I do kind of want to, uh, this sounds so like obnoxious now that I say it out loud and and you know what this may never even happen because you know for podiatry for this to be a thing it would we would have to be in America or something but to have like a talk show where I can like sit and interview guests like face to face ego talking now I know I know I'm gonna have to talk oh my god who is this person no I know what you mean (laughs) but I mean like how cool is that like I can just sit with someone and I could pick their brains. Like, I, I think that's the coolest thing. Um, well, you've, they've but, got pretty good. Like the Tobro has his show over in Canada. Uh, yeah. That he does. Um, he keeps rejecting all my messages. So that's why he hasn't been on oh, podcast. Bless him. Yeah, bastard. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> that's probably why he hasn't come on. Uh, but I've had Brad. I hope he doesn't watch this episode then. <laughs> but, uh, you yeah, know, uh, My Feet Are Killing Me. Yeah. Uh, that's the the American show. Right. The American podiatry show. And, uh, that's a good title. That's a really good title. Yeah. Really so catchy. Dr. Brad Damn it. and Dr. Brad's <laughs> been on. And Dr. Right. Ebony, who's his offside on the show, is going to be on. I'm doing an interview with her next week. So right. the thing is that it is, podiatry is becoming more mainstream. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and people like those shows like Pimple Poppers and just weird sort of stuff. I can't stand them myself. I, oh. I love that. I, oh, I love I just, it. Oh I my God. Do it. I just can't. I wait. just, it was, um, my boyfriend's kind of the same. Like he, he can't, I showed him a video of like a toenail removal once. And I was like, Hey, honey, look at this. Like, this is what I'm going to do. And he was just like, what? What? <laughs> he could not, like, he was gagging right off the bat. I don't know. I was like, Have you considered podiatry? He's <laughs> like, yeah, Never. No. Well, what when I used but to I'm put just on, like, but I watch hmm? a video. If I watch a video of someone doing nail surgery, it makes me sick. Yeah, I can't watch it. <laughs> it's disgusting. But when I, I was actually wait. doing it, when I was doing it, it didn't bother me. Oh, you haven't yeah. done one yet? No, no. So in my, we do nail surgery in our third year, and in year two, they they teach us more about local anesthetic first, and then they kind of in year three they um, get us to do the nail surgeries. But okay. oh my god, I cannot wait. Each other? Um. I think that would be in year three as well. I think oh, okay. so in year two, we learn about the theory of local anest- anesthetic um, and I guess like the uh, injection blocks and stuff like that. But then for year three is actually when we put it into practice. I cannot wait. I cannot wait like this. I've been dying to do this. This sounds so morbid. Where is this interview going? <laughs> no, but so when, This is so just going to be like. So even though you're now interviewing people, are you mm-hmm. like, as you, are you still doing 
you're going to keep doing videos about your journey as a student? I think so. Um, I think it's just kind of turned into video um, interviews at this point. Um, but I think in the summertime, I'll have a little bit more spare time because it is it is a bit hard to juggle um, like your two studies and also doing, you know, like interviewing people. So I need to kind of uh, bear that in mind. But interviewing people and, and mashing that together, it's it's really not that much of a workload for me. Yeah. And I don't mean to brag, but it is when you when I show you how I do it, it's it's very simple. Like I've broken it down to uh, even even doing the thumbnails for each video. Like I've started to do custom thumbnails, and that's when I show you how I do it. You're like, oh yeah, this is this is there's nothing to it. Like there's no magic to it. Um, but kind of juggling that with year two, like I have to be very very careful. Like I don't want to fail. <laughs> so yeah, yeah at no, this that, point, that it's would be just, really embarrassing. That would be so embarrassing now that I put myself out there so much. <laughs> yeah, people can remember that actor that did Bedard but failed in the second year. Um, <laughs> so yeah. with going back to when you first started doing the videos, mm -hmm. and were, were you comfortable initially in front of the camera? So when you first put the camera, were you like, oh, yeah, I'm just a natural in front of the camera? Or were you like, ah, oh, geez, I'm shitting myself a little bit. I, oh, I, God. I sound silly. I look silly. Yeah. Um, I look blotchy. Am I, you know, you know, they say camera puts 10 you know, 10 pounds on you or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I ate too many yeah, cameras I feel like I've got about, I feel like I've got about three cameras <laughs> on me at the moment. Um. <laughs> um, yeah, a hundred percent. I did not, I did not like the way I looked. Um, uh, different angles make you look different. And that could not be so, like more true when you're filming yourself. I, it's like, oh my God, like I didn't know. I look like a monster. And uh, I felt like, like, my voice sounded different to then how it actually sounds in my head. And I was like, oh my God, who let me out the house? <laughs> I'm like, who is this freak? Um, but then once my mom was just like, once my mom was laughing, I was like, oh, this is, this is fine. This is okay. Plus she, she threatened to put the videos out there. So if I didn't buckle down and get over myself yeah. and put, start pumping out videos, like she would have done it on my behalf. Um, well, the good part is, though, oh. the reason I asked you that was because I know there's a lot of people that that's what stops them doing videos in the first place. Yeah. It's just, oh, I'm going to look silly. <clears throat> yeah, probably more than likely you will look silly to yourself. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to sound awful. And I tell yeah. you, when I used to, when I first did the podcast and I first listened to my voice, I went, oh, <clears throat> God, do I actually sound like that? <laughs> but now you get in really close and you get your sexy radio voice happening. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you do, all of a sudden you realise... Actually, I just, I look funny to myself. I sound funny to myself. Mm -hmm. But to everybody else, I still am, I'm exactly the same person that they see live. Yeah. But then at the end of the day, you got to ask, like, who cares? Yeah. Like, just get over yourself. I think that's the biggest hurdle is we have to, we have these, like, mental blocks. And I was talking to Jonathan Small yesterday, and he mentioned that people have these mental blocks and that's what stops themselves. Like they they stop their progression. And I thought like, wow, that was that was really that was so true. And even the people that have rejected to come onto my podcast, um, I guarantee you, that's probably one of the things that they just have this mental block of like, oh, I don't really want to put myself out there, and it won't be seen as professional. Or I'm just assuming here. I don't know what their actual reasons were, but I think sometimes <clears throat> just fear. It's like I, yeah. I managed. Uh, I don't know if I wrote it in my book. I've mentioned on the podcast before, but I managed to get through primary school, high school, and university mm -hmm. without ever giving an oral presentation. I just never did. That's it. crazy. <laughs> I would just, and I did my first oral present or talk to a group of people when I was 26 years of age. I got uh -huh. invited by this doctor. He said, Hey, can you do this talk? I went, Yeah. And after I said, I went, what the? First of all, my swan. I went, what, what are you doing? And so anyway, I got up there. I did this talk mm -hmm. and I turned a 45 minute talk into about four and a half minutes. I ummed and ah, <laughs> ah, and I, I had sweat just pouring off of me. Oh and my I God. Couldn't talk. It was, and anyway, I finished yeah. it and I walked out and I sat down on this on this chair and the doctor came out straight after me and went, oh, okay, he's going to put his hand on my shoulder and tell me, Hey, you didn't do as bad as what you think. Yeah. Cause you always think you did worse. Of and course. He, yes. So he sits next to me, puts his hand on my shoulder and he says, that was the worst presentation <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. He says, please, if anyone ever, ever invites you to speak again, just, just say no. 
do not oh, do that. No. Do not do that to the world. Do not do that to the crowd. It was just, he says, it was just <laughs> disgusting. He walked off. And I went, yeah. oh, okay. I suppose I can only get better. So I, I did another <laughs> yeah. one and I went from atrocious to just horrible, horrible to bad for a long period of time and then bad yeah. to not very good. And then it just, it got easier the yes. more that I did it. And then I also learned too, practice is a good thing. When you actually Absolutely. practice what you're going to say, it really yeah. helps. Um, I remember for like our first year, uh, we had to do presentations in front of the classroom. And yeah, bugger that. My, pres my presentation was Davis's and Wolf's Law. And I was like, oh, I got, it was myself and another classmate that got the of, these topics. Soft tissue adaptation, is that right? Yeah, soft tissue uh, for Davis's and then Wolf's Law is osseous tissue. And um, uh, another classmate got uh, Da Vinci's ankle, like if Da Vinci had to construct an ankle, what it would look like and stuff. So the our professor said, like, these two are the hardest topics that you will get. So whoever gets them, you know, tough, tough shit. Bad luck. Um, <laughs> so I ended up getting like one of the hardest and I was like, damn it. Um, and I remember like weeks for weeks, I would just practice in front of my mirror. And I had it down because we had to do like a five minute presentation and Davis is in Wolf's Law. You can't, you can put it down to five minutes, but to be able to like, um, I don't, to be able to get the true essence of it, like you, you need more than five minutes, but yeah. you can technically summarize it in five, in five minutes. Um, and my poor roommate, like all she heard was me just repeating that she must've thought I had lost my mind because I was just repeating this like little cue card, um, just drumming it down and, and pra practicing in front of a mirror. And I remember like on the day of the presentation, like my nerves set in so bad, but because I had practiced in front of a mirror, I knew the dialogue off by heart. So I, I just kind of like went into autopilot and went off um, and started r rambling off this presentation. And, and I ended up doing quite all, all right. Like it wasn't that bad, but I remember I was holding this, um, Freddie, like the the little foot skeleton I had in my earlier videos. Yeah. So I had him as my presentation buddy, and my hands were shaking so bad I had to toss him mid interview. I was like, uh, sorry, not uh, sorry, mid presentation. I was like, bye, Freddie, you gotta go because I can't, I can't hold you. Um, yeah, don't you hate but then, that? You got your notes there, and you. <laughs> yeah, you're just, and it didn't matter how much I'd practiced in front of the mirror, like my nerves, I could not get rid of them, and I was like, oh, this is this is awful. So I feel like a lot of people are probably like that too. Like their nerves will set in and there's just no recovering from that. Yeah. I used to find the, whenever I did a talk, it was Jonathan Small I was talking about mm. when uh, at Liverpool 2019, when I got up to do my talk yeah. and I said to him that I said, whenever I do a talk now, I said, my goal is to get a laugh in the first 15 seconds, 15, mm. 20 seconds. It's just to say something that's, a bit out there or something unexpected that you just give a bit of a bit of a laugh from the crowd. And once I get a laugh from the crowd, it also gives yeah. you a chance to just <clears throat> settle, settle the nerves down. Yeah. And, or another thing I found, if it's a smaller group, say it was like 30 or 40 people in a room mm -hmm. is ask, is start the presentation by asking a question. Yeah. And then straight away you get the interaction with somebody. And as soon as you've had that interaction, your nerves calm down and yeah. then you can actually get into what you're going to talk about. Yeah, but getting them to laugh is is key. I really agree with that one. Oh, it's nothing worse when someone comes out and they are boring. There's some people who probably shouldn't talk. <laughs> yeah, they just shouldn't do presentations. They're boring. They're, they're boring. They should not yeah. do videos. They're boring. So getting back, <laughs> getting onto your videos. So mm. now that you're really comfortable in front of the camera, mm. doing interviews and all that, I can see, and this is why the other reason I wanted to get you on is so that other students could hear this. And I think they mm. all should be practicing doing videos, whether they're interviewing famous yeah. podiatrists, could be interviewing their dog. It doesn't really matter. The idea is just to be doing yeah. something. So when they do get employed, mm. if they don't you know, work for themselves, if they're employed somewhere, having that asset of being able to talk in front of a camera and also help the business you're working for produce videos mm. for their social media yeah, oh, I just think makes you so employable. Oh my God, absolutely. The, I mean, these are these are skills that um, they don't teach you necessarily in school. No, and they don't teach you at school. <laughs> no, and and if you if you can show your employer that you've made an extra effort to pick up skills along the way, I think that kind of tells them that 
okay, this person is gonna gonna be willing to learn more and grow more with the business or, or whoever you're going to work for. Um, and one uh, one of my interviewees actually said that for an NHS interview, you have to you have to do a presentation. Okay. Um, so then if you're if you're out there and doing these videos, you've, you've got that practice, you've got it built in. So when you do go up in front of people that are your contemporaries or your seniors, you you've already practiced. You're not gonna you're not gonna fumble on that. I mean, you may be nervous for sure. Don't get me wrong, because it is intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> trying to like talk to your um, to talk to professionals and be like, hey, listen, like employ me. I'm I'm smart, and here's why. <laughs> like that's that's scary stuff. Don't get me wrong, but if you have that practice, you're you're not gonna let your nerves get the best of you. They will be there. But they're not gonna get the best of you. Oh, nerves! Nerves are a good thing. I remember somebody mm. saying once that if you go to a presentation and you're not nervous. It means yeah. you don't care. This is the yeah. nerve just means that you, not that you care that, oh, am I going to make a film myself? But you care that you're going to do a good presentation yeah. because you care that the person or the people listening to it are going to get value out of what you're about to say. And as long yeah. as you're a bit nervous and you care, then it's always going to end well. It's the people yeah. you get up there and the boring ones are ones who sort of get up there and just talk and they don't care. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't like I couldn't listen to someone who's monotone like I end up just falling asleep I end up zoning out <laughs> like, my podcast if it was hi I'm Tyson Franklin and welcome, hi, to, welcome the podiatry, to the channel. podiatry <laughs> legends podcast the podiatry I'd get bored just doing it <laughs> so to um I'm just looking at the time uh to wrap up yes if somebody's <laughs> listening to this and uh, two things. One, if they, if somebody wants to reach out to you and connect you with you some way, what's the best way of doing it? Facebook, um, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn are my top three areas of communication. So definitely. Okay. Your videos are out. on YouTube though, aren't they? That's your yes. YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you put on Instagram? Do you, do you put the same, same content on each thing? Well, Instagram, obviously not. Yeah. Um, so for Instagram, I upload my thumbnails. Um, and then I post a link like in my bio, like where you can find the channel and, uh, Facebook, I kind of upload the video as well and kind of direct them to YouTube and same with LinkedIn. I do the same on LinkedIn, Twitter okay. as well, actually. And your name's pretty easy to find. So yeah, <laughs> you're not going to find anyone with the same name. I should hope. No, no. It's like my friend, uh, Nikki Jed, who does, uh, he comes on, does webinars with me now yeah. about, uh, websites and we're doing another one soon about applications mm -hmm. that you can use in podiatry yeah. and yeah, her name, Nikki Jed, she said that she's the only Nikki Jed that she knows. So yeah. people say, Oh, have you got your contact details? She says, just look for Nikki Jed. If you can't find me, you don't deserve to be able to find me. Oh, I like that. I'm using yeah. that. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> yeah. So if you look up Tyson Franklin, there's a million of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of Tyson Franklin that are black American sprinters and basketball players. Oh, yeah. So but that's why I put to be fair, like, I, I don't know, like you, you came up pretty quick on my search results. Like when I, when I, when I internet stalked you for a little bit there. Yeah. But if you put the E in, you'll find me really <laughs> easily. And if you put the word podiatry <laughs> in there as well, it comes up easy because well, I've done over, what, there's over 125 podcast episodes on here. There's over 200 yeah. episodes on It's No Secret with Dr. T. Mm. And I've probably been a guest on about 100 different podcasts mm -hmm. over the last, say, four years. So yeah. that's why it's just, it's all about the more stuff you put out there, the easier it is to find you. And it also, yeah. it's social proof for your patients as well. That's the part that's that true. a lot of people forget. It's you keep putting yourself out there. And yeah. when patients are searching for you later and they see all this information, they go, wow, you're everywhere. You must be good. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the one thing I didn't realize I was doing when I was doing this video was building my personal brand. Yes. Um, and it was pointed out to me like, honey, like this is, this is your platform. Like this is what you've done unknowingly. And I was like, oh, this is, this is have a you cool byproduct. Domain name? Have you, have you registered the <clears throat> domain name for your name? No, because I am a broke university student. <laughs> as soon as you get off here, yeah, just put some of your drinking money aside and yeah. <laughs> go and register your domain name. Just one of the real cheap places just to register your domain because okay. that is really, really valuable property. So like I have TysonFranklin.com 
and yeah. tysonfranklin.com.au, so the Australian and American one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just get the domain. And anyone listening to this, straight away, go and get the domain for your name because you never know when you know, your name's going to be bigger than what it, did, what it is that you're actually doing. And you may never use it, but it's still, it's real estate that once it's gone, you can't get it back. That's my tip. That's a good tip. I'm going to go do that right away now. Actually, so, and you've, so you've inspired me. <laughs> the last thing I was going to ask you is, do you have a tip for anyone that's listening to this? They now know how to find you. Do you have a uh, final tip before we wrap up? Yes. Get over yourself and don't be afraid to put yourself out there because magic will follow. Trust me. <laughs> my, uh, my a quote unquote career is a testament to that, that opportunities will definitely come your way. So please don't hesitate to put yourself out there and don't hesitate to message me as well. If you want to collaborate, I'm always down for that. That is perfect. So I want to thank you very much for coming on the podiatry legends podcast and, uh, thank you. and being a legend before you're even a podiatrist, which is, uh, Woo! Whoa. <laughs> and you've already got a podiatry legend shirt i do oh my god i cropped it i cropped the hell out of it it's like this cute little like t now so it has like the logo you cropped, and you cut it up i i cut it up i'm so sorry but it looks no. so cute you have to send you have to uh post a photo or something have you posted a photo with it like that no but i i think i will i will yeah. once this episode comes out i'll, I'll upload that because i know uh mike Luga. Did the same thing because he's got arms like tree trunks. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> he he cut the sleeves off, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think a few people have done a couple of modifications to them. Whereas yeah. I I just wear it as it is because as is <laughs> nothing to Sorry. show off. Um, no crop tops here. <laughs> I've not worn a crop top in many years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. God damn it! I was holding in that snort so well. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've worn a crop top or high heels, but there's a story behind that. Uh, and I did win, <laughs> and I did win Miss Voluptuous that, that night. So, Ooh. yeah, I've still got the sash. Look at you. Well, I still have the sash for as proof. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> thank God, thank God, those photos were pre-internet. So, um, oh yeah, <laughs> they're, all, they're all hidden away in a box. So, Ekta, thank you very much for coming on, and uh, yeah, just sharing some of your. Um, your story on how these videos all got started. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I always enjoy talking to you. So don't run away yet because the video is still going. So people will still see oh. the video. I just turned the audio off. So like I always say, the podcast is a really tidy, tidy version of everything. By the time I edit yeah. it, I take out some of the dumb shit I say. And <laughs> I do because sometimes I'll listen to it and I go, yeah, and we went off. Yeah. So I just cut it back a little bit whereas the video yeah. which we're still recording now um so watch all your swearing um <laughs> yeah it just is what it is so people who watch your video get to probably see a little bit of talk beforehand and a bit mm-hmm. of talking afterwards so i'm going to press yeah. stop on the video as well where it, oh here it is up here so everyone that's been watching the video thank you for hanging around uh for this long if you um as i say if you didn't hang around this long you left earlier or yeah you know, watching this anyway so get stuffed Shame on you. Shame on you.